Um, has anyone seen the sun? Because it seems to be missing. Um, hello? Hello? Huh, weird. Hmm, what a beautiful sunset, just without the sun. Hmm, weird. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the second episode of Creeping Chicken's Adventures in Minecraft. My name is Creeping Chicken. How's everyone doing today? I really hope that you are all having an amazing day. In between episodes, I have been one busy chicken and I was trying to figure out what I want to build next and where the structures will go. As we are at the beginning of the game, the things I need the most are blocks to build with. So my two most necessary villagers to train are stonemasons who will give me some blocks to to build with and the second one being librarians who will give me books for enchanting so we already did our bookstore here where our librarian is already feeling very comfortable with and in today's episode i want to make some proper space for these traits. And I thought the great place to put it would be here, at the very entrance to our village, just next to the docks that will come here in the future. The one problem is... Oh! An ink sack. I need that. Thank you, squid. Yes, so, and I need to sort out my inventory. It's a total mess. Yes, so as I was saying, the only problem is that I didn't think this, this infrastructure through from the very beginning. I want to put the stonemason's shop just over this general area. But it doesn't really fit in with where my mineshaft currently is. Because this hole in the ground here, this leads to my mining area. Oh, you just dropped an egg. Just so oh, sweet. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to judge you. And I was thinking that in order to make this uh, whole village feel natural and functional, my mining area should be somewhere around here, where we do have some natural mountain structures. So I guess I'm going to need to move my mineshaft over here at some point. But today I want to focus on building a nice little home for as many stonemasons that I can probably have. So let's go ahead and start building it.
And so, my friends, it is done. I mean, the general structure is here. We just need to do some work on the interior of this thing. So our masons, wherever they gone, got some place to work on and to shape their stones and to mold their bricks that they will later on fire up in this in this furnace here. And so they have somewhere to sleep because I'll be the first to admit that's not the most comfortable bedroom that, that I've seen in my life. But it will certainly get there. Soon. Ah, can you feel that? It's the smell of a freshly decorated interior. So let's have a look around. Outside here we have our working area where our masons can do some work. Cut some stones, mold some bricks, mold some pots and uh, jars or bigger pots. I don't know what this is, but I like this little design. So they can do their work over here, cut some stones and put it all into furnace to fire it up and do some building materials that they can store later on on these pallets over here. We got one over here and one is over there in the area where I think a crane will go that will be putting our products onto a ship or something like this. Inside we have another working table some raw materials that our masons are using to do their trade, create bricks and stuff. We have a little potted plant over here, just to decorate the area. And a chest to store stuff, as chests are usually used to. Upstairs we have a little living area with a comfy little bench just next to the window so you can have a look outside and enjoy the view over here behind this not really working door but i like the design we have our bedroom with a comfy double bed and a desk we maybe do some designing on our pottery that we'll be doing. And a picture to get inspired for it. And another cute little plant. And the one over here. So, this is our Mason's workshop. I really hope that you like it as much as I do. Our Mason is certainly loving it. He's just standing here on this uh, painfully looking of spinning metal, you weirdo. So, as I have mentioned before, this area that you can see behind me, I would like it to be my mining area. And this is where my mines will go. And I have been thinking about this village in sort of like districts if you will so if this is where my mining area is going to go so it would only make sense to locate uh, all the trades related to mine mining over this general area with our mason workshop being here i think this would be a good entrance to the whole district that would probably spread around somewhere to here and here is where all our blacksmiths and weaponsmiths like all kinds of trades related to whatever we are bringing out of our mines like stone for stone cutters and ores or smelters and yeah you get the idea right 
And the entrance to this district would probably be somewhere over here. I think this would work. So I will be doing some planning on this. But in the meantime, we need to think how to sustain our growing population of villagers. And these two little fields and one over there that's not being used by, by our villagers currently, they simply won't cut it to sustain the whole village. So we are going to need a bigger and better uh, food industry or food district. And I thought the great place to put it would be around this general area here. This little peninsula here, which would do great for our fields and windmills and maybe a little bakery over there. Something to keep our vill villagers fed and myself as well, because as you can see, I'm eating carrots. They are delish, by the way. I have been farming some pumpkins and sugarcane in this area, as you can probably tell. This was only to give me some some uh, emeralds from the villagers to do some other trades for building blocks. And please do not ask me what is going on in my cow pen, because I don't know and I do not want to ask questions. So I will go ahead and make myself some shovels and start shoveling away to build some pets and create an overall layout of where the two districts are going to go. then so we got ourselves some paths and this little platform on which our first farmhouse is going to go all that's been left is to get rid of out again get rid of this old farms and start building our new farmhouse and some bigger, more productive fields.
alarms deactivated. Almost. I left some composters for these guys to have something to do while I am busy making this area work. But I will leave building this farmhouse for the next episode as we are slowly running out of time. And there's an axolotl. Sea murderer! So in the last episode, I've asked you if you can guess how many ocean monuments I've encountered while cruising this ocean behind me. So the answer is, I have found nine monuments on my, on my journey. But after I finished recording, I have looked at my actual seed map and found out that there are quite a few more around the spawn area. I don't know how normal this is, but during the years that I've been playing Minecraft, I rather struggled to find any ocean monuments at all. And over here we have about 15 of them. And there are this particular two in this area here that are very close to each other. And I might have some plants related to these two monuments, but you'll have to wait and see what I'm up to until my later episodes. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode. This has been Creeping Chicken and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!